Well, now I can brag about myself. This is my friend Larry <laughs> here, and he has a pretty interesting mind. What were you saying about when you first moved down here? I'm not going to tell you. RCA. 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 Yeah. Was there an RCA down here? RCA Boulevard. We oh, built computers here. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I came as a technician, and, and uh, within a year I was an engineer, and within one more year I was a senior engineer. So when you moved down here, did you move down here to go to Pratt, to work for Pratt Whitney or for? No, I moved. I moved down here because my dad lived in Florida. Okay, I, and my home address when I was in the service was being single is wherever your your home is yeah so i was paying florida insurance and florida uh, license plate yeah and uh, uh like when my dad moved to miami my insurance doubled yeah and i'm stationed in south carolina i'd never even seen miami anyway uh, where did you grow up uh, el mundo moondog el mundo el mundo where's that the world the world <laughs> so because your father was in the military so no, you traveled my, all around my my dad was border patrol he was uh, what border patrol border patrol yeah and, and justice department okay so we moved everywhere you did i've got two junior high school diplomas to prove <laughs> that from two different states. How yeah. did how did you get involved in the? How did you get interested in all of that scientific equipment from working at like Pratt Whitney some, and some of the stuff? Yeah, when I was at Pratt uh, itself, we we used some uh, equipment like that, and I determined to have my own. Yeah. And it, and then as the schools all all went to. Uh, uh, Solid state uh, instruments. They dumped the the uh, very instruments that determine those specifications, and the guys going to school have no idea how that how that ever happened. When you get to to the one instrument I had there, where where you're throwing the ball, uh, you're studying it, the very thing that that the Greeks put together, uh, but you don't. You don't see it anymore because you just press a button and, and, and the answer comes up. Right. You know, but when I was doing engineering, you, you worked with a slipstick. So what you did, you had to do the math in your head, too, to be able to place the decimal. The slipstick actually just got you closer to the, what the real value was. And you nailed uh, uh, a dollar uh, uh, keypad will... will do better math than the slipstick ever did, you know. You must be a math ma math nope, magician. I'm very bad on math. No, I can't imagine that. I'm bad on math. That's why I learned computers because you can go into the computer and program the computer to do the exercises that you need to do. Show me, show me this machine that you you're talking about in in the back of the truck, in the back of the car here, the oh. machine that you were just describing. <laughs> it's locked. Yeah. I'm gonna go find out if the key's gonna work. How did it lock? Oh, because you, you closed I, it. Yeah, I closed it too hard. So this is the machine that you were talking about. That yeah, now... there's two of them right here. Yeah. What what it does, it, it sets in here and it it throws that ball that this is pulled back yeah. and then it shoots the ball into this thing it catches it and it goes up and it, and it latches and holds so you see the force yeah then the, oh you can set it up so that it will also throw the ball but but this way you can actually measure it these are these are instruments not to be used for uh, doing real things but to but to, to teach a, a student how to how to uh, you know what's actually happening yeah and this was you said a, a mar uh, a egg carton yeah. folder what they did they they took a, a a sheet of cardboard yeah and that is so neat and it's cut 
Yeah, and this is jammed in here. Right yeah. Now. And that and, and the if, and if it, you got a minute, we'll go over to the other car. I, I got some things that I can bring out. For yeah, yeah, yeah. You. I would love it. Yeah, and you maybe want to shut your check out. Oh, uh, Either drive it in here or drive it over there. I came over because this nice gentleman had loads and loads of cartons of bubble wrap for me. I'm gonna turn the car off and head over to his place. Actually, we'll drive over to his place. He's so interesting. A scientist at Pratt Whitney for years. And now he's retired. He's a friend of a friend of mine. And he collects scientific equipment. I'm so intrigued by him. I meet so many interesting people. So this is probably going to be one of my first YouTube videos that I'll post. He owns several houses here in the neighborhood that he worked very hard for, I'm sure, throughout his life. Okay. These are all things I'm working on right now. The box alone is intriguing yeah. and exciting. The, the one thing is, is that with no instructions on a lot of stuff, even the guy selling it has absolutely no idea of, of uh, what how it to was, work it. Right? You know, so. Oh. And this is the device that was in there? Yeah. And what does this do? He is set up to set over a map, a very accurate map yeah. or or more likely a spy satellite photograph okay right and what he does he's able to measure out targets the the vertical is is on this and it's to uh to half a millimeter you can read to half a millimeter and uh what it does, it sets over, there's, there's a little uh, pointer on the bottom of this that'll poke into the, into the map or, or the... Uh, so do you think a device like this was used by like the uh, us, NASA and, or the, um, maybe the Marines or the Army or one of the... Yeah, excepting not ours. It's uh, Russian. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. This is a Russian device. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they scratched off uh, the it, serial it, number or something. No, on no. There. Uh, yeah. More, more than likely, it just got rubbed. And uh, it looks like it's in perfect condition. Well, he isn't, it's, but he's going to be. Oh, you have two rows for the horizontal and I'm sitting here okay why are there two rows yeah <clears throat> well there's a a sighting point here Is, can you see my finger in there yeah okay but there's also a pointing one right here okay okay so whether they're trying to sight on it or trying to poke a little hole they're offset can you see how much they're offset yeah okay so what what happens is there are are two things here and you use use this scale for the pointer and you use that scale for the viewer and and you, you needed to have the right number so whichever one you were using. Anyway, uh, 
that is the zero baseline so that by putting it on that you have the correct orientation over the the map or the the photograph now just out of curiosity how much did something like this cost you from russia how much do you oh, remember how much you paid for this oh yeah oh this one was about uh, 230 with shipping 230 with shipping yeah the one that's coming in in a couple of days uh, from similar my, one uh, it's the same kind of unit but from somebody else yeah okay it, it was uh, a little bit cheaper but anyway, this guy definitely didn't know what he had or the value no, no, of he, it. He knows exactly what he's got. Oh, he knew what there, he had? Oh, yeah. There are little, little uh, pins in here. Uh, there's evidence that, that the box could accommodate more than this instrument because there's several little places in here mm -hmm. with nothing within it. This is my trying to figure how to do everything. They, right there it says uh, there's a little drawing here and that's this little cavity see a screw would go in and then it would slide mm -hmm. and, and hold it if you wanted to bolt it down on something so what I do I look and try to figure out what everything was was mm -hmm. interesting the, the other one has another little tool it has this very same shape to it and, and then a little rod and uh, the one this, that's coming today uh, well, no, not today. Uh, the thing coming in today is a Sykes hydrometer. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the... Uh... This, this is uh, what came in uh, yesterday. It's what's left of a planimeter. The, uh, it's in, the case is in very bad shape. But uh, what a planimeter does... He sets down over, over a drawing and a pointer follows the, the thing. It, what, what, what it does, it figures area. Well, you can, you can do oh, a circle real easily using just a formula. But if you've got, uh, if you've got uh, a uh, irregular line, Mm -hmm. You have to divide that thing up into little bitty pieces and then add all the pieces together. You know, you're doing triangles and, and stuff. Well, this, this machine does it all by itself. It, it sets... So who would use that, like a land surveyor? Uh, well, this particular one was a, uh, by uh, one of the surveyors. I don't know if I can see it right now. Well, Cordy was the, was the manufacturer of it. But but it, this is a burger. What year you think this is? Mm, burger and Sons. So so this is a surveyor company mm -hmm. that that makes that. Ah, Boston, Mass. Yeah. Look at that. But That's it's not where made there. It's it's not where it was made. That was Cordy is in in oh, Switzerland. Oh, it's Switzerland. Yeah. And that's who really makes it, DRP, uh -huh. Democratic Republic. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, cool. this is this is how they come. He's all busted up. He's missing an, an end piece. I can buy it when nobody else can because what would they do with this? Here's what was the leather covering. <laughs> would you pay for that? Oh. Um, He's in my range of buying junk ones. Uh, let's see if I've got a good one here. This is a much newer one. Same type of device? Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay, you know, what they did is they improved. Try, trying to trace with that little pointer is harder than looking in here. There's a, I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's gonna show, but when it's down, you trace little, little, uh, there's a little red ring. 
right in here and you follow it but you can see as it's coming up mm -hmm. and it's the very same kind of of device in this one here he has a a block as a weight rather than the, the other and he does the same sort of thing of, of going around and tracing this and what it does is a little there's a little wheel in here that as it goes one way it's rolling forward as it goes another way it slides and what the what you do in here and this is for maps you're tracing it well it's for figuring area out of of anything oh i got into that because i collect steam indicators steam indicator is a oh analyzer for steam engines. It was invented by James Watt in the uh, 1780s, and it wasn't known to the outside people until 1820. And uh, you've heard of James Watt being the father of, of the steam engine, and he wasn't, he's not the inventor. He was able to get more out of a steam engine than anybody else could. Mm -hmm. And the secret was the, the indicator. Well, what it does, it has, I don't know if I've got one here. Do I have one here? No, I know what it is. This man is so knowledgeable and so full of information. Oh my goodness, all these little wooden boxes. I love oh, yeah. the boxes alone. <laughs> oh, the, the boxes thing, are great. The thing was, in, in Europe... Oh, look at that box. Had, it's beautiful. Well, he's, right? he's really ready. So that's why he's over here. He's, he needs to get work done on him. Oh, wow. What is this now? This is a steam indicator. Oh my God, I can't believe you know what all this stuff is. Oh, this is Ashcroft. This is a Navy version. The Navy version, any steam that goes up here and passes the piston has to blow out. But the Navy said, hey, I want to be able to point that. So they made the Navy version with just a little swivel like that so you can point it away from you. Mm -hmm. Oh. The push rod, take take a train engine. The mm -hmm. push rod is running the the uh, the wheels, mm -hmm. moves in and out. Okay, there's in the front there's a a, a double acting piston. It, one side gets pushed and then it gets pushed back the other way by a big valve. Mm -hmm. Okay, this goes on to one end of of the uh, the pusher. Yeah. A paper chart is is put on it. Oh, um, so a string goes on through here through this pulley and rotates the chart. At the same time, pressure is going down here and raising a uh, a pointer which would have a little ladder or a scriber if it's a metalized paper. Mm -hmm. Oh. As it's going, as this thing is moving, this piece here moves up and down and draws a big chart. Yeah. And uh, then, then somebody that, that knows what he's doing analyzes the chart. There are, this is one end, this is the other end. The guy did it with ink. Mm -hmm. uh, very suspiciously uh, near perfect. So it's suspicious to me because <laughs> most most aren't aren't. This is the shape that you're normally looking for. But uh, and what does it do now? It measures. What does it measure in in the? In it the is the the pressure that's within that cylinder throughout the stroke. This is this from from on the red one from uh, this end to this end. Yeah. This is what when the steam comes in. 
the steam goes a, a bit and they shut it off and the steam continues to expand. Yeah. This is where uh, what was ahead of everybody else. They used to run the pressure in and then try to get it all out quick and go back the other way. Yeah. But what he does, he goes in a bit and there's a little plateau up here. Oh, the, the steam comes in, if, if the guy did the numbers right, and, and those aren't the correct numbers, he would need to know the, the spring, the spring that the pressure was working against. It's a 40, 40 PSI. If this were the spring that was in there, that was half of the, half of the height. Is this one will do 80. Okay, 80 would be boiler pressure coming in, or what, what was left of the boiler pressure going through the little valve. And then they shut it off, and the, as the piston's going out, it's still expanding, because that's what steam can do, as opposed to, uh, to air or hydraulics. You pointing at that? How thing? do you know all that? Uh, How do you know all this? Just reading and just studying yeah. and... I'm uh, what you call a non-degreed engineer. Gosh uh, almighty. I, I have a high school education. Do you? I, I retired from uh, United Technologies as uh, a senior research engineer. <laughs> okay. Anyway, just just by... you, you got to go and learn how to, how to do these things. Yeah. Keys. Might be for this, might not. I hadn't even tried that yet. Mm -hmm. Two valves would go in here. Amazing. Anyway. Just amazing. So, so what happens with the, when you had the planimeter, what you did, I'm just gonna take the head of it, is that you would be starting at some known point or you do a little pinprick and then you follow that around all the way around and then you get the reading that that little that little wheel yeah. this wheel here yeah. is the one that's that's turning sliding or yeah. going backwards and you you have the area and normally there will be a chart uh, with the set that tells you what the calibration is for the, this particular one a lot of them are sold those charts are long lost but the thing is, it's very simple. You take your compass out and draw a five-inch circle, and uh, and these are trace. one, two, three, four, four of the hundreds of types of items that you have collected throughout the years, and and just oh. love, and just yeah, uh, uh, it's unbelievable. I'm kind of like that with. Uh, old pocketbooks <laughs> I just uh, yeah. you know I'm like pretty well versed in old pocketbooks and look at that little ruler well these are made specifically one for for a spring this one here would be 80 to the inch well this was a 40 spring so you're, you're going to have to divide the readings here by two but uh, normally if, if however many springs you have if this unit was for a particular engine it stayed with it like say on board a ship or, or so mm -hmm. you would only need the one spring but uh, if you were a boiler inspector you would need a full set or even a beyond full set mm -hmm. so anyway I'll awesome you... show us show us what's in that last box and then oh, okay what that, is in there I'm it's curious being, it's being restored it was all busted up and I've got first two finish on it that I got to rub out yet. What is this? Sticky, sticky stuff. This, this is a level. It's a level. Fits on a tripod and oh, you can, you can see where, whatever the height of this is, you can see that when you've set it up correctly with the bubble here. Oh, I see it. And, and, and again, is that for land for, surveying, do you yeah. think? Yeah. It's oh, yeah. old land surveying. Well, there's two kinds of, of uh, instruments for, for surveying. It is sticky rubber is dying here. But this box was all knocked apart, so he's just coming, he's just coming together here. 
Okay, listen, I am going to say goodbye here on, on the video. And uh, are you pulling something else out? Do you have something else in there that well, you want to show me? I, I don't want to know. I was going to say, I'm just gonna I, what I was going to say gonna is, open the door okay, here. I'm going to say goodbye. You say bye, Larry. Say bye, and thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Larry.